Welcome to Brando Consulting. This video was inspired by a phone call I got yesterday from a client who said, my COGS is overstated. So we met a little bit later and saw that his COGS was most certainly overstated by, oh geez, 300,000. We dug into his file and took a look at things. We took a look at the account mapping in Fishbowl and we took a look at his default account mapping. His accounts payable was mapped correctly. And then we drilled down to the parts individually and saw that the parts just had the regular default mapping uh, for assets and cogs. So nothing, nothing crazy there. We talked a little bit about how Fishbowl works. I think it's important for accountants and bookkeepers to understand how Fishbowl affects QuickBooks so the two systems are used properly. We discussed how in receiving in Fishbowl assets are debited and payables are credited. He's a QuickBooks Online user so he said okay that that sounds gr great and and in the work order step, finished goods are debited and raw goods are, are credited. And really it's uh, whatever asset account the finished good is mapped to or whatever asset account the receiving is mapped to. And everything was just default and simple, so nothing crazy there. And then on the sales side, we talked about how inventory is uh, credited and COGS is debited. And this is where he became a little, little upset because uh, they're trying to run their company in an accrual base type environment, and that's that's their goal. Now, Fishbowl doesn't have any switch to turn on or off for accrual base or or cash base. Um, so we dug in a little bit deeper to see exactly what what was going on because I still didn't understand why his cogs were being doubled. As we dug in a little bit I looked in his QuickBooks Online file and found that the bills looked a little bit different than what I expected a fishbowl bill would look like. There was no PO number here in the memo field but there was a PO number here in the description field and there was no part number or part description. I also noticed here, I probably should have highlighted this, under item details, there were no item details. So that told me that the user, the accountant or bookkeeper misunderstood how Fishbowl and QuickBooks worked or someone other than who attended the training was entering things into QuickBooks. One of the most common mistakes I see new Fishbowl QuickBooks users making. They manually enter bills into QuickBooks. Okay, don't do that. Enter your bills into Fishbowl. Your, your inventory related vendor invoices should be entered into Fishbowl. Let's take a look. Once you create a purchase order, it shows up in receiving, looks like this. I'm going to move this a little bit. So we've got a purchase order with, with that amount, $15,303. And in QuickBooks, I started with just an example fresh QuickBooks account. There's nothing in inventory and um, nothing in payables. QuickBooks Online uses this holding account, something that's just sort of separate item receipts. So then we go ahead and receive in Fishbowl and export to QuickBooks. And what that does is, there we go, debits inventory and credits this holding account. It also makes a journal entry in the background, and that's how QuickBooks Online represents the item receipt. So the next step, and this is the step they were missing, is to enter the vendor invoice into QuickBooks by using the reconcile button. Once you reconcile and finish this off in Fishbowl, you'll get these blue check marks. And then we can export to QuickBooks. And at that point, Fishbowl creates the bill for you in QuickBooks. And then 
Fishbowl moves the amount from the holding account to the payable account and creates the bill. It sends your purchase order number over to QuickBooks. This is what your bill should look like in Fishbowl. It should show up under the item details section with your part numbers and your part descriptions. And your purchase order number will show up as the bill number and your purchase order number will show up under the memo section. So what they were doing to double their cogs is they were manually entering a bill and debiting cogs and crediting cash, I think is, is what they were doing. And so when, when they um, debited cogs at that point, you notice back here at the beginning, Fishbowl was debiting cogs again at, at sales. So thank you for joining us today at Brando Consulting. And hope you enjoyed this video. If you have more questions about uh, accounting related subjects between Fishbowl and QuickBooks, um, give us a call. Let us know.